This is Gravel Pit, obviously a three point capture map, very different to a five point capture map. The main thing people need to remember when they are playing Gravel Pit, this map is all about time. It's not about holding a point for the entire duration of the map, it's about buying yourself as much time as possible. The first thing I'll run through is the attacking. It's just easy for me to start off with the attacking. Obviously when you're attacking you get your setup time. Most people will generally run two scout, uh, two soldiers, a demo man and obviously your medic. Um, for your two scouts, the simple thing that they have to do is go to camp A, check in for a demo man stickies in obvious places there, sometimes here, sometimes a sniper will be watching from this general area. But obviously just go to camp A, no one else needs to go to A. While your scouts are capping A, it's good practice for your medic just to stay at the resup. Medic should just sit here so he can't get sniped. Do not do the jump that puts you into there and gets you stuck. That has a million videos on YouTube of it. It is a bit old now. But the medic should stay in the resup. Medic should fully buff two soldiers and the demo man. And the sole purpose of the two soldiers and the demo man is to just have one suicidal life with the sole aim of trying to make their medic pop. Um, if you sync up the right, you can have your demo man come from here or the other side and your soldiers go from the other side as well. Don't take everyone from the from the same side, otherwise it's not very, be very beneficial. But obviously try and get the height of the roof. Most medics will be in this general area when they're defending B. So ideally you want to try and whack them, just try and force the Uber. If you force the Uber, you're going to make it a bit easier on yourself to attack. If you do force the Uber, medic again should not be dying at all. Uh, medics should wait for the respawning heavies. If they are running an SG, the best process you can have for attacking is just take your demo man, two soldiers, with your medic. Be keeping track of Uber because they are going to be building Uber at the whole time. A should roughly be capped when you're pushing this in. When you do push this in, make sure your scouts are ready from C. When you come from here, just use your demo man, put your soldiers up on the roof, try to help, uh, try to make sure that they maintain themselves. Uber your demo man from here, mostly the SG will be in this area for a defense. Uber the demo man in, take out the SG. As soon as the SG is down, make a very clear call to your scouts to come in. If you take the SG down there, most medics will sit back here to avoid the Uber. So if you do bring your scouts in, your scouts are going to come in from the flank and make it extremely messy. Um, ideally, you want to be trying to pick off the medic before he does get an Uber. But the sole purpose of the Uber on this occasion is just to take out the SG and bring your scouts into the fight. If you are lucky and you do get the medic and you do start to cap B, there is no reason for anyone but two scouts to be on B. If you put your entire team on B, you will not do very well because they have the option to push back in. Two scouts on B will give it the maximum four times cap power. Then generally you should have a soldier demo man standing just about here, demo stickies here as this is the most likely way for the other team to come back in to try and cap, uh, try and stop from capping B. Medic should be standing just about here which is pretty safe with a soldier there. The other soldier should be just watching here making sure if anything's come in a good clear comm so you can move your demo man to the brunt of the force with the medic. Demo man should ideally be the first line of defense with your stickies and all you're wanting to do is just stop them coming back into B while your scouts cap. If the situation is that you take the SG out, the, uh, you don't kill the medic, it's now obviously they've got an Uber, your team's perhaps messed up a little bit and you're back in the same same scenario where they've got B fully locked down, you don't have an Uber. Now you've got the option to have utility classes, a spy is not a bad idea, a sniper is not a bad idea if you've got someone that can aim. So now what you want to be doing is you can either go from B again which is a very similar sort of push but a little bit more tricky or you can now go for an, for an A to C push take all your heavies up through A if you're running utilities let them sort of do as they see fit if you're still running two scouts leave them back at spawn ready to come in from B waiting for the Uber make sure you've built it then obviously just coming in from here if you come in from this way you've got a lot of places that can be sticky and it's incredibly dangerous it is doable, but you'll probably have to pop your Uber a little bit earlier than you'll need to to take out the SG that's there. Another valid option is to just have a demo man throw a few stickies down there so you're protected from behind. And then obviously, two soldiers can just dual spam the SG. If they time it right, those two soldiers will take that SG, which gives you the option to use the Uber for something else like killing the medic. 
If you do come through A, or the scouts that have capped A at the start, please remember to take out the teleporter. Uh, the entrance will be there over the other side. Just remember to take that teleporter out. Otherwise, you'll have someone come in, teleport behind you when you are attacking, and it'll be unexpected. If you have taken the SG down now, you've got the option to take the two soldiers in from here. You can get a bit of height from roof. If you're running two scouts, bring them in from the far side. So basically, you're sandwiching the team. Um, try and bully the medic a little bit. Try to make him pop. Try and get your own position. You've got the height. Don't give up this height too easily. The height advantage that you've got, if you come and clear, check that everything's clear so your demo man can come in. You can pretty much put a soldier, two soldiers on the roof and have your demo just spam down in the shadow area. Um, hopefully they're going to pop their Uber before yours, uh, or you're going to kill the medic. If not, just keep going at it. Just make sure you maintain to keep your team organized. You have to organize your pushes, so you're pushing in a six. If you start to push in in ones and twos, you're not going to cap B. When you do get in a position to cap it again, run with, uh, if you've only got one scout, try to leave if you're running a sniper spy on there as well. I know it's times three, but you still want to try and keep all your heavies up here. You want to try and stop the other team coming back in. Um, that's pretty much the situations for attacking B. There's a couple of variations of it. You can use utilities, you can use pyro if you want. But to be honest, an attacking pyro on B is not a very good class. Uh, you're not going to get enough damage put out. You're not going to get enough reflex put out to actually do anything on B. But if you do have someone as competent as a pyro and you want to try it, by all means. Uh, the whole idea of attacking is not so much having a set plan. It's just about organization. Organizing a push to try and have two two areas of a push. Try to have your heavies and potentially two scouts in another way. So basically, you're take you're giving the the other team. The, uh, the other team have to think about two ways that you're attacking, not just one. If you bring your entire team in from C, you're a concentrated attack that will not be very effective because basically the enemy can just completely focus on that rather than the two scouts that potentially you can get behind. And again, just use that distraction, talk very clearly to your scouts and say they are distracted, move in scouts because your scouts are going to get a pretty free run to come in behind. Um, assuming that you've capped B, the best way to cap C is to kind of roll B to C. Um, if you're in a brilliant situation where the medic's died and yours hasn't, you've got an uber advantage for C, which is fantastic. That would make C much easier to push. For the first to push, most teams will come from this entrance. This entrance at C. Most people will uber, two soldiers demo man up onto the point, basically get everything up onto the tower. The first push can be a little bit messy, there's no real organization around it, it's just about trying to get up there before the other team get an uber, getting off some key picks and seeing where that leaves you. you know, it's worked great, but obviously if they do have an uber, just make sure they use their uber. If your medic dies, you have the opportunity to swap to crits. When you've failed your first push, or if you've succeeded in your first push, you go to defend. But when you have failed your first push, you then have the option of coming through A. Just so everyone's aware, um, most teams will call the entrances by number. So going from that entrance there is entrance 1, that is entrance 2, that is entrance 3, that is entrance 4, and that is entrance 5. It is much more beneficial for you to number your entrances when you're defending as well, purely to call Sniper 1. Otherwise, Sniper B, left, far, far left, no, no, the right side of B, it becomes very confusing and muddled. Sniper 1 is a much clearer comm and it will clear up your comms. Um, 3 is favoured, or 3 and 4 are the favoured pushes from coming through. If you do run crits, please try to keep it hidden from the other team. It is a pretty known tactic, but hopefully you'll get the first crits off and they won't be aware about it. The idea for crits is just have your medic build here, make sure no one peeks out at you. Um, send your two soldiers and potentially a scout down to this side. If you're running another a sniper, try to have them snipe from B to cause a slight distraction. Your soldiers need to get to this area of weight. Take your demo man and just crits him and crit sticky. Rain them up onto the point. As many crit stickers as you can get up there before you die. Two soldiers jump up. Uh, obviously don't let the demo man die. Medic can die. Two soldiers jump up. Those crit stickies are their defense basically. They're going to blow the crit stickies and knock anything off the point. If you've timed it right you should just have a crit's advantage. Otherwise. Otherwise, you do have the other option of a normal Uber, just bringing it in from here. Uber, get people up onto the point. You can use a pyro for here. 
This is uh, quite a nice thing for the pyro. If you run a pyro from here, just jump your two soldiers and demo man up and just run your pyro up with your medic. The soldiers and demo man will cause enough distraction up there for your pyro to get all the way up and just air blast them off the point. And then basically you've got your medic and pyro on the point. Hopefully you're going to get it. Again, with push in C, it's all about organization, all about making a push count. Don't push as one or two, push as six. Plan your attacks. I've given you basic attacks, but there's variations that you can explore. There's spies, snipers, there's a lot of variations to the attacks. And most of the attacks that you can invent will be a lot more beneficial for you to use, as teams won't expect them. The unexpected on Gravel Pit is a lot more better than it is on other maps, purely because they won't be expecting the tactics that you have. Again, the ones I've given are bog standard attacking tactics. That pretty much does cover the attacking part of Gravel.